In this screencast, we're going to look at average value and its relationship to centroids and um, average temperature. The idea is we're going to go back to first semester calculus and we're going to take a function on an interval, a to b, and I want to know the average value. You could think of this as the average price of the stock. If these were the prices of the stock for over some period of time, what's the average price? Another way I like to think of it is if you think of this as an anthill filled with sand, and you were to take this curve and you were to shake it, where would the sand level off to? Well, the sand that's up high would kind of fill in the low spots, and we'd get a height over here, that height I'm going to call h, and that height h is precisely the average value. The idea is I want this area to match that area. Or I could think of it as I want the area of this rectangle to match the area of the function. So the area of rectangle, which is h, the height, times the width of the bottom, which is b minus a, needs to match precisely the area under the function, which is a to b, f of x dx. Or if I solve for h, h is 1 over b minus a, times the integral from a to b, f of x dx. You can write that in one other way, which I'm going to do because it's going to help us out as we go. It's the integral of a, from a to b f dx over the integral from a to b dx. Notice this integral is just t, and then you plug in b, plug in a, and that's precisely the denominator. So this is how you find average value. You could write f bar, the average value of f is equal to that quantity. Well, we now want to repeat this in 3D. The idea, suppose you take a curve, so we'll take an ellipse, and we did this in the first screencast, above the ellipse, let's kind of get an elliptical cylinder and we'll have some region, we'll make it look something like that. We want to take this region, now if you think of it as a cylindrical or an elliptical ant farm and you were to pick it up and shake it, where would all the sand fall? Think of all of this filled in with sand. And it would eventually kind of level off to some specific height. And that height would be the average value. Well, to find that height, the idea is I need the base, the length of the base, which is s, and I need the height, we'll call it h, this height to the top we'll call h. So the base air length times the height should equal the area of that function, which we already have is f ds along the curve. So if I solve for h, it's 1 over s integrate f ds. Or the way we get the arc length is we just add up little bits of arc length. So I can take f ds and divide by ds. Notice the similarities. All we did was we changed the x to an s. And now we can do the exact same thing over functions in high dimensions. So, some examples. Centroids. This is essentially the average x, y, and z value. Well, if it's the average x value, then the average x value should be found by, if I want the average f value, I put an f in there. So if I want the average x value, I put an x in there. That's it. How do you get the average y value? Well, you put a y inside. And any guess on how you get the average z value? You got it. You put a z inside. You can think of this if you have a, an arc, so we'll just go in 2D. Suppose you take a semicircle, and you're only considering the edge outside. Where is the centroid of just that wire? And the idea would be it would be somewhere in the middle. And I could find the x and y coordinates by just computing that integral. We can do that briefly if we let's give it a radius. Let's say it's got radius 3. So if our curve is 3 cosine t, 3 sine t, then if I want to find x bar, x bar is simply, well, in order to do this, I need a parameterization, which means I need to find r prime, which is, I've got the parameterization. r prime is negative 3 sine t, 3 cosine t. I need to find its magnitude, which is, what's the magnitude? Well, that's going to be 9 sine squared plus 9 cosine squared 
which is just 9 times 1 or 3. So that is our R prime. Recall ds is the magnitude of R prime dt. So in this case, I get a 3 dt. So anywhere where I see a ds, I can put a 3 dt. So if I want x bar, well, I need the x value. Here's our x value. So I'm going to integrate 3 cosine t. That's my x. I need to make sure I put a ds in, which is 3 dt. And then I divide by the integral. The ds is a 3 dt. And now I need my bounds. If I want to only go halfway around this semicircle, then those bounds would be from 0 to pi. 0 to pi. That shows us how we get centroids. And the last thing I want to look at is just average anything. Average temp, for example. If you suppose that some function, a function for temperature in the plane of some object is x squared plus yz, and we go along a curve, so the curve we're going to find temperatures for is a helix, cosine t, sine t, t, we can do the same thing. If we're working on a helix, and we want to know what's the average temperature of points on the helix, then all we need to do is use the average value formula. First, I need to get our prime, which is negative sine t, cosine t1. I need to find the magnitude, which is sine squared plus cosine squared plus 1. Now this is the same as root 2, which means my ds is root 2 dt. And if I want the average temperature, I should add up the temperatures with respect to length and then divide by the length. Well, I already know how to get the temperature. It's x. x is cosine. So I'll take our cosine and square it. Plus y times z, which is sine times t. I also need the root 2. So I better include the root 2. And then I got to times by dt, integrate. We got to go from go one way around the helix, 0 to 2 pi. And then I got to divide by ds, which is just root 2 dt from 0 to 2 pi. That completes this screencast.